Researchers continue to piece together the fragments of ancient civilizations. We know how our ancestors farmed the land and built glorious cities 10,000 years ago. But what do we know about our ancestors' ancestors? Where did they come from? And is there a missing link to be found? Alien blood. The idea blows a hole through mainstream theories of human evolution. In northern Kenya, they have found the boy, the skeleton of what is believed to be one of our oldest ancestors. By using carbon dating on that skeleton and others, scientists have formed a consensus about when the first humanoids evolved. But something extraordinary happened 30,000 years ago. Humans began a rapid advance from cave painters to sophisticated pyramid builders. And it was bestowed upon the citizens of Atlantis, transforming the island into the intellectual beacon of the pre-ancient world. It's bigger than Rome, it's bigger than Egypt, it's bigger than uh, Greece. You know, Atlantis is bigger even than our own cyber age, actually. Because the further we get away from it in time, there it looms on the road ahead of us again. Sarian is convinced there were some 500 alien visitations during the time of Atlantis. And because of the spectacular nature of these encounters, there is evidence if you know where to look. In uh, the coffin texts of the Egyptians, we hear about crafts that come and pick up princesses and fly them to foreign shores in an instant. We have uh, the Laura Caves in India where you can actually go and look at them these wall reliefs where it literally shows you crafts with little people inside them, the gods, above the tree line, and all the heads of the people are looking up. Authors like Zechariah Sitchin have gone to the far ends of the earth looking for clues, painstakingly piecing together enough fragmentary evidence to build a new theory of human evolution. A basic conclusion of my writings uh, has been that those who gave mankind civilization were visitors to Earth from another planet. Uh, if I say extraterrestrials, it's a, it's a dirty word, <laughs> but that's what they were. <laughs> this is called the Sitchin is one of the few people on Earth able to read 6,000-year-old Sumerian texts. These writings, according to Sitchin, contain unmistakable clues to ancient intergalactic space travel. And in order to come and go between them, their planet and, and our planet, they needed a space facility. The space facility was in a place in, 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 in Mesopotamia, in today's Iraq. Uh, the mission control center was at a place called Nippur, and the uh, actual spaceport was in a place called Sipar, which can be translated as bird city. Many of them were depicted as bird men uh, with, with wings. Iraq. According to some experts, we can find very detailed information on UFOs and aliens in the old Sumerian culture, now considered to be the cradle of our civilization. The people then had extraordinary astronomical knowledge. Sakura Sitchin. If somebody says, uh, uh, where did you get the idea? I say, I read the Sumerian tablets and that's what they say. They said uh, that our solar system is made up of 12 members. And this is stated in the Sumerian text over and over and over again, not one time. And they say there is the sun, which is in the center, not like the Greeks or others thought that the earth is in the center, the sun. Uh, there's the moon, which they gave reasons why they considered it a member by its own. And ten, not nine, but ten planets. Therefore, I'm very happy that when today astronomers look for this planet, they call it planet X. Uh, they mean maybe the unknown planet, but it's also the tenth planet. They called it Nibiru, which means planet of the crossing, and the ancient symbol was the cross. Not from Christian times, but from 6,000 years ago. And they say that this planet, the twelfth member of our solar system, 
has a very large orbit of 3,600 years, and every 3,600 years it comes between Mars and Jupiter close to us. And it is then they said that people, uh, people that look like us, not uh, <laughs> with little horns or green, uh, people they look, that look like us started to come between their planet and Earth about 450,000 years ago. Why do they look like us? We look like them. Because if you know the Bible, which is based on the Sumerian tales, at some point they engaged in genetic engineering and mixed their genes with the genes of uh, Homo erectus. We can use uh, various uh, uh, scientific terms, but let's say with, with early hominids, to bring about Homo sapiens, us. You know, who, who would have thought that talking about the evolution of man and creationism and Darwinism, I mean, I got calls for days after you were here. This really piques people's interest. Um, well, let's start with that, because most people either fall into the category of thinking that uh, you know, creationism, God created the earth and man, or Darwinism, we all sort of evolved from lower life forms. And your research shows, in your opinion, that neither one of those are true. Right. I've, alternative. I've, I've done some extensive research as far as uh, humanity goes. At around four million years ago, something appears called the Australopithecines. We are told that we humans evolved from these creatures called Australopithecines that later evolve into something called early homos, homo habilis, homo erectus, and that means man in scientific terms. Neither of those look anything like us. They, we've all seen the skulls and the body parts in National Geographic. They don't look anything like us. They have no foreheads. They have big brow ridges. They have large, round, nocturnal night vision eyes. They have big, wide noses. Mouths stick off their face, no chin, long arms that dangle down to their knees. In no way do they look human. So anthropologists don't argue the point. They say, you're right, there's nothing that looks human in the so-called pre-human fossil this record. Where the missing link this is exactly, there's something between pre-human man and... They say we're going to find someday something that is going to indicate a transition from these creatures that existed to man, which looks nothing like them. Humans have no place in the natural flow of life on Earth. So then you have to answer, ask the question, where did we come from? And in part four of the book, I deal with that, and I believe that the Sumerians, the ancient Sumerians and what they had to say about it are correct. And what they say is that there's another planet in our solar system that was captured by our solar system as the solar system was forming. It is not in a counterclockwise circular orbit like the other natural planets. Because it's captured like a comet, it has a clockwise elliptical orbit of 3,600 years. On that planet, the Sumerians say, lives a superior race of beings known as the Anunnaki. They call the planet Nibiru. They call the people the Anunnaki. They're called the Anunnaki. The Sumerians, the first great culture that we have on the earth 6,000 years ago, right out of the Stone Age, possessing over 100 of the first that we attribute to a high society. They're the very best of the ancient cultures, preceding and better than the Egyptian, Greeks, and the Romans. In their writing, the first writing, of course, they said that there's another planet in the solar system that they called Nibiru that was captured and moves like a comet in a 3,600-year orbit. Our own astronomers know it's out there, they call it Planet X. It has a gravitational effects on the outer planets. They can't find it because it's so far out. Exactly what okay, the Sumerians say. They, the they say that on that planet, the Sumerians do live another culture called the Anunnaki, and that in our past, in the past of Earth, at around 400,000 years ago, they came here to work, to do a job, which I go over in the book, and while here, they decided to create a slave, to genetically engineer a slave, using the creature of Earth as a genetic base to make the new slave and servant better adapted to the planet than they were. That's us? That's us. Basically, the Anunnaki said in their writings that the Sumerians left behind, we shall make the Adamu. They called their slave servant Adamu plural, which comes down to us in the Bible as the Adam. We shall make the Adamu in our own image after our own likeness, word for word in the Bible, and they did that. So no, we, we look like... 
that we, the, the modern race of people, were genetically engineered right. by this superhuman race of aliens that came from another planet. And that we look like them. In the, in the uh, cylinder seals that we have, the 5,000 or so cylinder seals that we have out of the Sumerian culture depicting gods and humans on the same cylinder seal at the same time, they always look the same. And this we is look why like we them. only use 10% of our brains. They genetically engineered our brains. They gave us their bodies. We have, you will notice, we have tremendously reduced strength from primates. If we descended from primates, where did our strength go? Every primate is five to ten times stronger than we are pound for pound. How did we lose two chromosomes? All primates have 48 chromosomes. We have 46. That is an awful lot of DNA. Where did it, if you read the Sumerian texts, the Anunnaki flourished from around 400,000 years ago. And by the way, they called their, where they lived in uh, the Tigris-Euphrates Valley, the Eden. That was their word for where they live. We've heard Adam. And we've heard Eden. Eden. Well, it turns out that a lot, of the, a lot of the Old Testament is an attempt to rewrite the Sumerian epics of creation because they were considered to be the guys with the word. I have to break here.